Welcome to Math Studio Talk. The purpose of these videos is to help you interpret what students should be able to do and understand to meet the demands of Common Core Math. We will demonstrate various games, activities, and models that can be used within the structure of a formal lesson plan to develop flexible thinking and deep understanding. And of course, we'll show you the math. Hi, I'm Nick Timpone, and in this video I will be dealing with the counting and cardinality domain for kindergarten, which builds from the work done in the CC domain in pre-K. As you can see, students will extend their knowledge of the counting sequence, recognize relationships between numbers and quantities, and compare numbers between 1 and 10. So let's start with standards 1 and 2 because they're so closely related. Students will be doing rote counting from 1 to 100 and counting on from a given number. So say 8 and they count on 9, 10, 11, 12. Students will also count by 10s, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, but only on the decades, which means 10, 20, 30, 40. They don't need to do 14, 24, 34, 44, okay, only on the decades. Many kindergartens come in already counting, and what's needed is daily exposure and practice, and it needs to be fun. You want kids counting every day, and you want them to be having fun while they're doing it. So let's start with the first activity with this hundreds chart. You won't be at a table, most likely. You'll be sitting in your chair, and the kids will be on the floor around you on their uh, rug. But the idea of using a hundreds chart is a good organizational pattern for the numbers the kids see all the time. So just simply point and count. 15, 16, 17, 18, cold call kids. Anna Maria, start on seven and give me three more. Seven, eight, nine, ten, pointing all the time. Start at 65, Billy, and give me three less. 64, 63, 62. Constant counting like that. And this is also a real good activity, is counting on the decades and then back on the ones. Watch. 10, 20, 30, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. Give me three back, Julie. 43, 42, 41. So activities like that are fun, engaging. Cold calling works really nice because the kids are on the edge of the seat because they don't know when they're going to get picked. Or they, so they really have to be paying attention. You know that as a teacher. It's a great technique. And it works really, really well with the hundreds chart. In kindergarten, kids are only counting up to 100. In first grade, they'll extend that sequence to 120. In this standard, the students will count a number of objects and write the numeral that represents the number of objects. What has to happen first is formal instruction of writing numbers. And it doesn't happen all the time, and it's really important because we want the kids to be writing numbers consistently from grade to grade to grade. So begin with the sentence strip book. It's perfectly good practice. It's been around forever, and it's been around forever for a reason. And in terms of sequence, go number by number up to five. So let them practice one. And this isn't a 15-minute activity. You know, do it five minutes a day for a week. Practice that number one. Then practice the number two. You have all year to get this right. Practice number three. Practice number four. Practice number five. Then after that, let them do one, two, three, four, five. Let them string that along. Let them write one, two, three, four, five. And then continue that sequence, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And then have them string one through 10 on a sentence strip. And just practice with that a couple minutes a day for most of the school year until they become really excellent at it. Now, when they're off the sentence strip, we don't want to abandon the kind of structure that kids need to write. So what we can do is take the sentence strips away and move to graph paper. Graph paper is an excellent resource for math teachers to have and for students to learn to write on. Not only does it help them writing their numbers, when they start adding and subtracting, they're putting a number in a box. When they get to the algorithm in fourth grade, they can put a number in a box and keep everything organized. And when they get in the older grade, these boxes can get smaller, right? But in kindergarten, you want to give them nice big boxes, like half inch or th uh, three eighths of an inch, and then let them use that to write their numbers. So coming off the sentence strips onto the graph paper and continuing in math in the graph paper notebook is a really good way to go with writing numbers. 
students will often reverse their numbers when they're writing them. Make note of that, but don't emphasize it too much. They'll, they'll generally come around to getting the right way. Point it out, but don't make them switch every single one back again. It's, it's just taking too much time. They'll, they'll get it. So take notice of it, point it out, but don't make them correct it every single time. Next, we're going to count a set of objects. So let's put up a number card and a dot card. Okay? And the student simply grabs some counters and builds the numbers. It's really important for students to touch and count. So they're taking a counter, putting it down. One, counting. Two, counting. Three, touching and counting. Four, counting. Five. Now you have, look at all the representations. You have the numeral five, you have the dot card representation, and you have the actual counters. So the last thing you want the students to be able to do then is to take their pencil and be able to write the number. And you can do this by teacher giving the students cards. Students can be paired up and one student is picking the cards, the other one's putting the chips down and writing the number and switching it up so everyone gets to practice. But it's a fun, engaging, effective activity with many different representations of the same number. Okay, on to standards four and five. One goal of these standards is for students to count using one-to-one -one correspondence. Another goal of this standard is for students to be able to count a group of objects with the number of objects in the group and the numeral that represents the number of objects in the group. For example, four gummy bears, the number word four, and the numeral four. Another goal is for students to begin to unitize. To unitize means to immediately recognize how many objects there are in a small group of objects. And finally, we want students to begin to understand the ordinal numbers, first, second, third, fourth, et cetera. Here are some games and activities that will help students develop these skills. So taking these picture cards away, I'm going to leave some, but we're not going to use the chips. Is to give students a variety of number cards and dot cards jumbled up. And then their job is to play matching. Let's put these together so the number card and the dot card matches. Here's a seven. They might still count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or they might start seeing these dots in an order and recognize, oh, that pattern's a seven. And they might see a five, oh, that pattern's a five. And then numbers like 33, we want them to do this, 10, 20, 33. Remember, we were working on that in another standard. In kindergarten, everything's so connected standard to standard. 10, 20, 30, 1, 2, 3. Remember, I did that on the hundreds chart. The same thing we want the students to do in this activity. And 8. Okay? Another neat activity. And this one is really, the purpose of this one is to really understand that three is three is three is three, or four is four is four is four. No matter what it looks like, if there's four of them, there's four of them, and that stays. And this is a really cool activity. Kids have a lot of fun with this because they're using pattern blocks. And look at another connection in the standards to the geometry standard with the shapes that they're going to look at in geometry. So ask them to make a pattern in one square using only three blocks. And invariably, in all my years of doing this, the first thing you're going to get, or maybe the second, is you're going to get the fish. Okay, the kid's going to make the fish. And then the second one, and count. How many are there? Oh, there's three. Okay, let's write that number down. Practicing writing our numbers again. Okay? Okay, give me a new pattern, not a fish. I don't want a fish again. Give me something else. Usually we'll get a tree. Okay. Different shape, how many blocks? One, two, three, touching and counting, touching and counting. Write the number, practice writing the number. And then the student obviously will do that two more times with two more different patterns. The point is, they're looking at three objects arranged in three different ways with the number three represented underneath it every single time. The number three doesn't change when the shape of the object changes, okay? And now ordinal numbers. This is a really fun activity. Connect cubes. Give them two towers like that. The number you can give them depends on how much you want to do. You could go up to 10 with them. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So begin with one tower and start counting. First counter, second counter, third cube, fourth cube, fifth cube, 
six cubed, and then ask the student, replace the first red cube with a blue cube. So they'll take one off and put one on. And still holding it this way, orienting it this way. Okay, what's the first cube? What color is the first cube? It's blue. Put it this way. What color is the last cube? The last cube's blue. What position is the blue cube in? First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Okay, then tell the students something like, make the second and fourth cubes be blue. So they take this off, they put it back together. We need the second and fourth, so they're examining it. They're looking at the structure of the number. We're linear, which is going to relate to our measurement standards, and they're going to take this off. Maybe not right away, it's practice. And then put it back together. Oh, composing and decomposing numbers. We'll use this later using number bonds. So we have a blue in our second, we need a blue in our fourth. Third, fourth, uh, third, fourth, that's the kids. You know, they're gonna be, gonna need time getting it right. So we'll put it here, and we'll put it here. One, two, three, no, what position? First, second, third, fourth. Now flip it over, now where are the blues? Start at the bottom, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. And then, that's what you want the kids to say. Where are the blue cubes? You want them to count and be able to say first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. They're in the fifth and seventh position. You know, th that's the language you want to hear from the students when they're doing this activity. While playing games like these and working on these activities, students are learning different standards at the same time. In kindergarten math, the standards are all very closely related. So don't think that you need to pick your way through them one at a time. You'll see that the activities you do in one domain are supporting standards in other domains. Now on to standards six and seven. In these standards, we want the students to use both matching and counting strategies to compare the objects in a group. We also want them to be able to compare two numbers represented by numerals. We can do both of these things at the same time. Using shapes in games and activities in kindergarten is an easy way to connect all domains to the geometry domain. What I'm also going to do in this activity is address one-to-one -one correspondence. So let's do that first and show how it can be extended to deal with the other standards, right? We have to count the number of objects, we have to compare two numbers using numerals, and we're going to practice our one-to-one -one correspondence in this activity. So give students two different types of pattern blocks, and you're going to ask them to line them up one at a time, okay? So there's the one-to-one -one correspondence. One blue, one orange. One blue, one orange. Noticing I don't have them counting yet. We're practicing one-to-one -one correspondence. One blue, one orange. One blue, one orange. One blue, one orange. One, <laughs> did I mix that up? One blue, one orange. One blue, one orange, and uh-oh. Where's the blue that goes from that one? So now we're out of one-to-one -one correspondence anymore. So, but now we're going to deal with the other part of the standard, counting an object. Now they can count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Touching and counting and writing the number, practicing the number again. Count the blue. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Write the seven. Okay, now what we want the students to be able to notice is that we're going to compare the number to the group of objects. And they can say, hey, 8 must be bigger than 7 because the 8 is with the orange, the 7 is with the blue, and there's more orange than blue. So there must be, so 8 must be more than 7. And now they can practice their one-to-one -one correspondence again by taking away and noticing something else. I'm going to take away one blue, one orange. 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 One, oh, there's no blue. So now the students should be able to notice, or hopefully they'll be able to notice that, wait, I took those away one at a time, and I was left with an orange one. That means I must have had more orange ones. And since the eight is matched with the orange, eight must be more than seven. That's how we want students to understand why a number is bigger than another number, so that they can look at objects, match the number to the objects, and make the determination of which a number is bigger by looking at the physical model.
The work in kindergarten in this domain is very concrete in nature. This is on purpose. We want students to begin developing a very strong sense of numbers before they are introduced to the more abstract concepts like equations and mental math in the other grades. We also want to develop a love for math by including lots of hands-on activities, games, and songs. Thanks for watching this Math Studio Talk. We hope that you enjoyed it, found it meaningful, and learned a thing or two to take back to your classroom.